Hi, my name is Alex. I am an editor and a VFX artist, and I am making a video about how to do multicam using audio, uh, or sorry, using timecode, not audio. As an amateur filmmaker, I would always sync based on audio, get that nice separate zoom audio, and try to sync all your video clips to that. We know we're on a project right now that has hundreds of video files. I tried to do audio based sync, which was stupid, and it was a bit of a nightmare. And then my videographer director was like, hey, I used timecode on all of those. And I'm new to timecode, so I did some research. I'll put links in the video uh, time in the description to videos I saw that were very helpful, but there's some things they lift out, and I have learned a lot since then on how to do timecode based sync. Um, this is if your cameras were good enough to actually record timecode and you used some sort of um, syncing system. This is also um, my director used a camera that could not contain normal timecode and had to use audio jammed timecode using a, a tentacle system, I think is what it's called, and uh, embedded the timecode in the audio file. So I'm gonna talk about how to deal with that as well. Um, that's actually the first thing that I would do is if you know that someone recorded audio using, uh, sorry, recorded timecode in the audio to address that first, and I'll show you why. Um, uh, a normal clip, if it was brought in um, with timecode embedded, would, let's see if I can find the original file, here it is. It would um, just sound awful. I was just like, oh man, I don't know if you guys can hear this, it just sounds like a, like a horrible sound. I was like, well, that's not going to work for any kind of audio-based syncing. But no, that's actually the time code. But Premiere doesn't know that. And you might think that you could sync things by right-clicking and going to create multi-camera source sequence and going to sound time code. That's not what that is, though. It's not actually able to read those annoying click sounds and turn that into time code. This is basically just the time code of the sound file if the sound file had time code metadata, which this doesn't. Anyway, what you have to do in this case is actually download the Tentacle timecode tool, which is free on their website, and import all of these files that have been recorded with that. And what it will do is it'll tell you when it, whether the clips found timecode. And if it did, you go to File, Export All, choose the same folder is usually what I do. And then what you'll get is a whole bunch of files. It's pretty quick because it doesn't transcode or anything like that unless you want it to. Um, but it just gives you a whole bunch of files with underscore one and you import those instead of the original file and then you have the glorious um, one cool trick about it is it actually has a check mark when you are exporting to mute the audio time code so you don't have that horrible noise um, and so that's what I did I exported all those files that had time code um, in the audio and then imported those instead and got rid of the originals um, and so now the origin these files have time code, their actual metadata time code is correct and will sync with everything else. And I also don't have that painful sound. So that's the first really great solution for using cameras that aren't high end cameras that can just encode time code. Cool. So I guess that's out of the way I skipped, made that seem faster than it really was. But um, that's how I got these C cam files that were correct. Um, now, another part of this process that was a bit of a nightmare that I'm going to just talk about in case you ever run into this, although it's not necessarily related to multicam, is slow motion video. Um, a lot of the camera footage was recorded in slow motion, but not, uh, but it was in the burned in type of slow motion, which a lot of cameras, including high end ones, tend to do. So these files came in as, you know, 23 frames per second or 24 frames per second, um, but it's, you know, pre slow motion. Um, now, here's the thing. It's impossible, as far as I can tell, to know whether a clip is slow motion until you watch it. Um, there's nothing in the metadata that says that this isn't just a normal 24 frames per second live clip. So, to take care of that process, what I actually had to do was make a sequence that has all of the clips in it. For, I just usually did I did this one camera at a time, but you don't you could do it all all the clips from all the cameras at a time, and I put them in here, um, and I just went through and I looked at the audio. I know it's a bit rough, but if there's no audio in it because these cameras that do slow motion can't record audio when they're doing slow motion, 
that was basically how I could tell. So I would just go through here and what I would do is I would select any clips that you know didn't have any audio, put them on a higher track. It's just a quick way to go through and do this really quickly. Um, and then I would later on be able to um, select them and do what we've got to do with them. And I'm probably going to pause this recording because there's you know hundreds of files here. This is frustrating. Actually, while I do this, I will BS about how awesome I think it is to use cameras that can actually just record high frame rates. Um, I just would definitely recommend to anyone out there thinking of using slow motion and still able to rent or buy a camera, get one that can record 120 frames per second, uh, 4K. Like, uh, it makes your life so much easier. Um, you can do time code sync because it has um, time code. You can also do audio based sync because it will record audio. And the slow motion clips won't screw up um, because they won't be slow. They'll be live and then you can slow them down later. You get it anyway. Um, but these clips will not work with multicam syncing because they're longer than time was. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to exclude these slow-mo clips from my process. And now that I've pulled them all up, what I can do is um, just sort of move them, or I'm just going to hold on to them for now. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Why did I move, separate them in a timeline? Because what we're going to be doing in order to multicam is we're going to be telling Premiere which clips are what camera. This is so helpful when you're used to doing audio-based syncing. When you when you multicam based on audio, when you are doing it based on audio, you can choose you know which channel of audio it's syncing based on, but you don't get to do any sort of telling Premiere which clips or which camera. When you sync by time code, one of the coolest things is that you can actually choose which camera angle each track gets. So none of this like massive stair step of uh, clips on different tracks. But in order for Premiere to know what camera angle each clip is, we actually have to tell it. And there's also an option for using camera label. And that's when I thought, oh, okay, I'll just change the label color of each you know, folder of clips. Not the same. Label color has nothing to do with camera label. Both of these metadata options are a completely new set of metadata to me that you actually have to add by right-clicking on the top of your bar or going to the menu here and going to metadata display. And we're going to go under the dynamic media section. And then at the bottom of this list, we're adding something called camera angle or camera lab label. They do the same thing. I just think camera ang angle is a sensible term for what we're doing. So I turn that on, press OK, and now in my project panel, I can scroll over and see a camera angle um, column, which is very convenient. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell which Premiere, which of these have which angle. Um, I'm also going to be pulling up the metadata information using the metadata panel. I don't usually use this panel that much, but it's very helpful when you're doing bulk assignments of metadata. Because if I wanted to select all the A clips, for example, and then um, just type in this column. It will only do it based on one clip at a time. You can see it just does one clip selection. But the metadata panel up here does everything you have selected at once. Now, I am not going to select all the clips in my folder because some of them are slow motion. So instead, what I'm going to do is come down here to my timeline where things are nicely separated. And I am just going to select all the clips that have audio. And I'm going to still use this metadata call, uh, panel up here at the top. And uh, I'm going to go to camera angle. Interestingly, by the way, if you don't see camera angle in your metadata panel, not your metadata column in the project panel, but your metadata panel, you may have to actually add that as well. So just like the project panel has a metadata display option to show which metadata is actually being displayed, the metadata panel has that as well. And you may, may have to come in here and actually add it. Um, I think it wasn't on when I first tried this. So another little pitfall that people don't tell you. OK, so now I have the camera angle option here. I have my clip selected. And I'm going to finally call this camera A. And you could literally type cam A, or you could just type A, which is quicker. And I'm going to press Enter, um, or just like click some blank area. And this may take a little while. Um, and maybe not. I'm going to just try and BS. 
uh, well, it does it, and it did it. Cool. So um, you can see it didn't do all my clips in the project panel because those were slow-mo. And while I'm at it, one cool trick is you can just um, select all those other clips and use the camera angle and just say, like, A, slow. Just because I have this column now in the project panel, and if I'm looking at it, it might help to just understand, oh, that's not an uncategorized clip. That's just a slow motion clip. Cool. So then I repeat this process for camera B. And I'll probably pause the video unless I'm able to just bullshit and keep saying things that sound useful in the meantime. Um, add it to a timeline. Go through that timeline and look at all the audio. This is just to find anything slow motion that might be in this timeline. This is If you don't have any slow motion stuff, then you can skip this section. So I'm going to pause and I'll come back. When I come back, I'll have all my clips with the camera angle selected. These will all be B or B slow, etc. And I'll be right back. Okay, hi, I'm back and I've given the correct camera angle multi metadata to all of my clips. Um, all the A cams have A, all the B cams have B, all the C cams have C, and um, I've put all of the uh, slow motion clips into subfolders and using the metadata as a sort feature to just help me with that. And the reason I've put them in subfolders is because when it comes to time to actually do the multicam, um, it won't look inside of subfolders, so it just won't use that those clips. Um, another really important thing is if you have multiple audio files to work with, make sure you understand which of those were recorded on the same device. Um, if you have like three or four zooms or whatever recording at the same time, um, label those as cameras. So these were, you know, SA for sound A, sound B, sound C. Uh, so they end up on their own um, specific tracks. Okay, finally, the time we've all been waiting for how to multicam. Um, Annoying thing about multicam you may have noticed is that if you select clips across folders and have the folders selected, it will just gray it out and you can't multicam and you think something's wrong. Um, basically, Premiere is always going to try and look for the files in a folder if you have the folder selected. So if you have the folder selected and files inside the folder selected, it gets confused. So you could either deselect the folders and multicam just the files and then it works. Or you can just select folders, which is a pretty cool trick. So I'm going to do just the audio stuff. And I'm going to do camera C, holding control, camera B, and camera A. And I'm going to right click, create multi-camera source sequence. I'm using time code, not audio sound time code, right? just normal time code. I'm going to create a single multi-cam source sequence which will, since these were all recorded on the same day, that's important, um, the time code will sync. Um, and it will just be one big, what your whole day looked like. Um, track assignment, the most important here is I'm using camera angle, which is the metadata which we're using to assign cameras that we've worked on this whole time. I'm going to ignore um, the hour. Uh, I'm not going to ignore the hours. I think th what that would do is... It would, you know, if you started recording at four o'clock, it starts your timeline four hours in versus if you start all the clips start, whatever. I think that's what that does. I leave it alone. Uh, sequence preset. I'm using a, a preset that I made. I don't just use um, any other random default because this will make sure my audio track assignment is a standard timeline. So the uh, it gets routed to stereo. That's what I like. Um, Everything else is pretty much left default, and I press OK. And if this was syncing with audio, this could take an hour with hundreds of clips like this. But with timecode sync, it is done already, which is awesome. So I right click and open in timeline, or I set a keyboard shortcut for Control T to do that. And I'm just about to say this was a major success. It's almost perfect. I can see here that I have two files that are overlapping each other. Um, this is what happens if you don't correctly label things that were actually recorded simultaneously as separate cameras. This will happen with your audio or your video. It will just knock out the previous clip and just sort of, you know, in, uh, overlay edit them. So this is a problem here. I could, you know, solve this fairly easily by adding a track and moving it down and stuff like that. 
But I'm just going to show you guys, you know, the right way to solve this would be to reveal in Explorer, oh, okay, these were labeled the same. They were both SA when one should be, you know, SA1 as a separate camera. And then if I, you know, did this process again, just to prove my theory here, and make this even more boring of a tutorial, let's just get those again. I just re create the camera source sequence. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is that I do not move clips into my process clips bin. I used to do that because it was a way to tell what's been processed and what's not. Um, but it's much more important to me now, especially in these large projects, to keep my files in the original folder structure instead of having them all dumped into one big processed bin. Everything else is being left the same, not changing anything. Uh, okay, now it said a file did not match. What did I do wrong? Did anyone catch what I did wrong there? Yeah, I just must have selected some random stuff. Uh, let's try this again. Camera A. I must have... D did I do audio instead of time code? Fun. All right. Live. New. Multi-camera. Time code. Single cam. Camera angle. Correct. Everything else is correct. Okay. All right. It's taking a little longer, which is a good sign. And let's see. There it is. Here's our new version. I'm going to open in timeline. And there we go. It gave me a big gap. I'm not exactly sure why, but I can always just move that on over if I don't mind screwing up the time code, but this is everything I'm going to be working with with this project, so I'm just going to move it over. Um, and you can see, most importantly, now the audio is on separate tracks, so it is correct. And instead of looking at you know 500 video tracks and 500 audio tracks, everything is nicely organized. There's still a handful of them, though, just because um, this was six-track audio that was being recorded here on each video clip so maybe you'll have to deal with that maybe you won't but luckily I just have these main separate audio recordings that I can deal with um, but yeah anyway you can see that all my a cam stuff is on track a B cam on B and C cam on C and it is all synced up which is freaking awesome um, why is there a v4 track I don't know there really shouldn't be unless something was um, identified strangely but otherwise that's the rest of the tutorial thanks for watching this has been a boring long complicated in-depth alex zorski tutorial thanks for watching